going on everybody welcome to the week five 2021 iteration of learning out with nick bodiford my name is nick bodiford i am coming to you thursday night after tnf has wrapped up looks like russell wilson's got a finger injury he's got to work through hopefully that's not too bad uh been a long day so i'm gonna i'm gonna blaze through these you'll get all the information you need but yeah let's let's knock this out <clears throat> okay starting things off with the uh the five guys that I want to talk about section, the sleepers, the floppers, the guys who are going to blow up this week. Uh, first one, first running back, Damian Williams. This one might be a little bit uh, low hanging fruit, but I think that there's some interesting angles to kind of break it down. And I, I touched on this uh, in the running backs ranking piece, but um, Dave, Damian Williams is, is a very good dual threat running back. It was just, what, two years ago, one year ago, two, yeah, no, two years ago, um, when he was snubbed for Super Bowl MVP honors in uh, Super Bowl 54, when he was on the Kansas City Chiefs, this guy is a, is a very proficient pass catcher. Now, the, the Bears don't throw to the running backs enough, but he can do whatever it is this team asks of him. Like, I, I'm not quite sure that he's actually worse than David Montgomery is. David Montgomery is really good. Um, <clears throat> but so is Damian Williams. So what does he have in, in week five? He's going again up against the Las Vegas Raiders defensive front. Now the Raiders signed a uh, veteran journeyman uh, defensive tackle, Gerald McCoy, who, I mean, journeyman may be kind of a rude way to describe him because the dude's been a baller his whole career, but McCoy is still serving a, I think it's a six game suspension for performance enhancing drugs. So he's not back yet. Uh, this front seven is vulnerable. They're allowing 24 and a half fans, uh, half point PPR points per game to opposing backfields, the seventh most in the NFL. I like Damian Williams as a high end running back too a lot this week. Here's the key though. Um, David Montgomery is not expected to return until week eight or week nine. Now the bears uh, due to a knee sprain, the bears, their bye week is week 10. It's possible that they try to, like get Montgomery back on time, like let's say week nine, but if he's not like ready to rock um, and like, I, you know, the season's well out of hand, like it's a Mag Matt Nagy coach team, you know, they, they, they could, they could have a really crummy record at that point. They might just choose to shut this dude down in which case Damian Williams is a lead back for the rest of the year. Now that's a low probability outcome, but it's on the table. So uh if you didn't get David Montgomery or if you did get him, great. If you didn't, maybe you could still fire off a trade for him. I, I think he's going to produce while he's, while he's a starter. Guy number two, Jalen Waddle. So Waddle kind of flopped in the box score, but the Dolphins kept his slot receiver usage in line with Mike Gesicki's. Gesicki was just the guy. And I know Gesicki's the tight end, but he's, he plays slot receiver. Um, <clears throat> Gesicki scored, but their, their usage was very similar. They're not making them compete for slot reps anymore they're just letting them both run wild in the slot um they're playing the, the the dolphins are playing the tampa bay buccaneers this week and while i like some of the other guys too like Devontae parker and mike Kosicki, i think that waddle who uh, in week three it was had a, an average targeted air yards mark of under three yards uh, they use this guy right next to the line of scrimmage miles gaskin got phased out last week if there's someone who's going to operate as the safety valve for Jacoby Brissett against the Tampa Bay Bucks ferocious defensive front, it's Jalen Waddle. Um, they're also dealing with, I think it's three defensive back injuries at this point. So Waddle could go nuts here. <clears throat> Another guy I want to hit on Jamar Chase. So uh, Ch Chase and the Bengals are going up against the Packers who are already fielding a really bad defense. And that was before Jerry Alexander was, I think either ruled out or, or registered back-to-back -back DNPs. No, he was ruled out <clears throat> uh, with a shoulder injury. Jerry Alexander is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And again, like, I mean, this team was struggling to stop receivers with Alexander on the field without him there. I know this might be kind of a low volume passing offense, but Chase has been too good. And I think he's just going to go nuts against the, 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 um, the Packers. I've got him as a wide receiver one this week. <clears throat> Guy number four, Devontae Smith. So the rookie has been crushing it. Like he, he had a fantastic week last week. I, he, he cleared a uh, hundred yards and checking it right now. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah. He, he just, if it wasn't a hundred yards, forgive me for not having the data right in front of me here, but um, the kid looks like the real deal. And yeah, 122 yards, seven catches, 122 yards. Um, 
he gets to play the Carolina Panthers. Now the Panthers have added a bunch of cornerbacks, CJ Henderson. He's kind of dealing with a nagging groin injury. Uh, they've got AJ Boye suspended and they traded for Stefan Gilmore, who's still on PUP in a couple of weeks. This cornerback uh, group is going to look really scary for opposing wide receivers, but not right now. Uh, he is the guy in the, the Eagles offense. There's another one I'm excited about, and we'll get to him when we actually cover the, the Eagles as we get through the show. But Devontae Smith, uh, I, I think he's he's a locked in wide receiver too from here on out. And they, he gets to play Carolina this week, Tampa Bay, Las Vegas, and Detroit over the next month. It's going to be difficult for him to not finish as a top 24 wide receiver every week. So I'm very in on Devontae Smith right now. Last guy to touch on, Dawson Knox. And I thought about just doing the whole Sunday night football matchup, uh, Buffalo Bills at Kansas City Chiefs for this section, but that, that was not going to fly. Um, Knox is a tight end one right now. The, over the last three weeks, he's seen, seen no fewer than 78% of the team's snaps. While on the field, he's running a route on 88.2% of those snaps. Kansas City is allowing 13.6 half-point PPR points per game to opposing tight ends. That's six most in the NFL. Uh, this is going to be a huge shootout. Dawson Knox, I know it might be a little scary, but <clears throat> just because, you know, it took him a couple of years to get going, but uh, the dude has arrived. He is a real deal, dual threat blocker receiving uh, tight end in the NFL. Okay, starting things off, uh, Sunday morning, bright and early, 10 a.m. PST, New York Jets at Atlanta Falcons. Zach Wilson was great last week. Uh, he, you know, it was, a, it was a Titans defense, but you want to see these guys at least show up against bad defenses. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons may have an even worse defense. Their, their uh, pass defense efficiency rate is 31st in Patty Cooper's, uh, what is it, NEFF, yeah, NEF, uh, efficiency metrics. Um, so yeah, it, Zach Wilson, I, I think he's in mid to high. I think he's a mid tier quarterback too, who can finish as like a top 15 play <clears throat> Corey Davis team leader in targets, uh, with 29, he got back on track last week. I think he should finish as a safe wide receiver too. Again, this week, interesting developments happened, uh, last week, week four with Elijah Moore, the uh, rookie Z receiver out with a concussion, both Jamison Crowder and Keelan Cole came back. Uh, from from injury and Cole did so like thunderous or excuse me Crowder did so thunderously caught seven balls for 61 yards and a touchdown completely kicked Braxton Berrios to the curb now now Moore was Elijah Moore was mostly playing Z receiver but he is like slot capable um, Crowder I think just solidified his role here as like a PPR wide receiver three uh, and against the Atlanta Falcons I, I think he could have an, a similar week to what he did last week Keelan Cole, though, he caught three or four uh, passes for 92 yards. That's going to be tough. Like Elijah Moore had a slow start. That kind of an outing, I think, is going to – Cole at least forced a timeshare of the Z receiver position here and may have actually uh, won the starting gig. So I'm not starting Elijah Moore this week. I may not start Keelan Cole as more than like a wide receiver four or five, probably wide receiver five. But, yeah, uh, more I'm, – I'm low on right now. Tyler, Cl Tyler Croft, Ryan Griffin, uh, I'm not really – interested in either one of these guys uh we broke we broke it down on monday a little bit but michael carter is separating from the rest of the jets backfield ty johnson and tevin coleman uh, he's increased his snap share his uh care he had 13 carries last week tevin coleman was the next closest he only had four carter had three targets uh he ran uh ran more routes or at least saw a significant increase in routes run, run last week. And he scored a touchdown. The Falcons defense is allowing 23.2 half point PPR points per game to opposing backfields, 10th most in the NFL. I've got Michael Carter. as like a locked in running back three. I think he's a quality flex play this week. Johnson running back five Coleman. I'm not interested in uh, on the Falcon side of things. So the defense is bad enough that I think Matt Ryan is actually viable in two quarterback leagues this week. Not anything more than that. Um, Oh, one significant story was free safety. So they're already down strong safety, LaMarcus Joyner, Jet, the Jets that is. And, and now they might be missing free safety, Marcus May, who is a stud, um, but he's got an ankle injury. He he kicked off the week with a did not participate. And evidently he's facing charge, charges for a, a DUI and car crash from February. Doesn't look like he's going to be playing. So uh, yeah, Matt Ryan over the top. I think it's good. Tragic situation. I think Matt Ryan can can be a starter in two QB leagues, though. Um, of course, the biggest story here is that uh, Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage did not make the trip to London. That's where they're playing this week. Um, we don't know why Calvin Ridley didn't travel, other than it's personal reason, 
uh, a personal reason. Russell Gage, I believe, is out with an ankle injury. This makes Olamide Zacchaeus as like a volume driven wide receiver three slash four. Like if I ranked him, I maybe would go wide receiver 37. I'm probably more interested in, in, in full point PPR leagues and half point PPR leagues because he's not very good and he's very small, but you know, volume is king and the Jets defense is really bad. Kyle Pitts though. So his usage with Calvin Ridley is fantastic, but like this week, this has got to be it. Um, I, I, there will be a helpful table in the, in the rundown on the website, but like Pitts, the the dude should see 10 or more targets this week. I'm rolling with him as a tight end one. I'm going to bench Dawson Knox for him in one of my uh, personal leagues. Um, <clears throat> and I just talked up Dawson Knox as a guy, you know, that, that I want to start this week. So st- stay strong with Pitts. If it does not work this week, I don't know what to tell you. Like then, then you rip the pan at court. Okay. As far as the backfield goes. So Cordero Patterson, this is going to get really interesting with Ridley out. Patterson might play like the majority of snaps as a wide receiver. He's got positional versatility in Yahoo leagues. He's still a running back and wide receiver. Um, if you can start him, you know, as a, as a wide out in, in fantasy, he, here's the thing. New York Jets front seven is allowing the most half point PPR points per game to opposing backfields, 24.9 per game. Um, so Patterson, I think this is probably like where the cliff hits like I don't love the idea that he has to go run routes and actually win with his abilities rather than his like athleticism and versatility but the touches should be there with Ridley out for him to stay as a back end running back to this week I would really be trying to sell high though like I know a guy who just got uh, was able to ship him out for DeAndre Hopkins do that if you can get something like that do that immediately so as we just mentioned though the, the Jets front seven really bad against opposing backfields. Mike Davis, he seeded some work to Wayne Gallman last week, and that's a real kick in the pants. I've got Mike Davis as a running back three with as with running back two upside. Gallman, don't even think about it. If Kind of like Pitts. If Davis can't get it going this week in the best possible matchup, then yeah, rip the panic court. Detroit Lions at Minnesota Vikings. So Goff continues to just do his like matchup-based performances. Um but this is one where we kind of want to start. So the Vikings have been had for 278 passing yards, uh, which is 11 votes in the NFL. Sorry, got got caught up there in the notes. Uh, but yeah, uh, 278 passing yards per game, um, 11th most in the NFL. And uh, they've gone, I, I think uh, they've allowed 300 yard passers in 300, three of four games this season. So I think Goff is like a high, fo- high floor quarterback too. Okay, in terms of the, the wide receiver group here, so we have Khalif Raymond, Quinta Sivas, and uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. We kind of picked on on uh, on these guys as like matchup-based options last week, and, and that's, you know, what we should do. The cornerback duo that the Vikings are, are utilizing, Patrick Peterson and Brashad Breland, are friggin' washed. Like, I mean, as bad as it gets. So far this season, they have given up a combined 32 catches 483 yards and six touchdowns. You need to target that that kind of weakness. I know Khalif Raymond and Quintez Cephas are not flashy guys, but I like I'm very much in on Khalif Raymond, uh, who who operates is that inside outside uh, receiver. I think that he can play it. I, I think he'd be wide receiver three this week. Quintez Cephas, he's going to be glued to the perimeter, but still, I mean, at worst case scenario, he's running against Brashad Breland, like. I think he's a high floor wide receiver four, can easily finish top 30, 36. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown, slot receiver, he's going to go up against Al- uh, Mackenzie Alexander, who has been hit for nine he, nine completions, 12 targets for 120 yards. Wide receiver five in a full point PPR league. Yeah, you can do it. TJ Hawkinson, uh, dude has, okay, so he was DNP on Wednesday and was barely able to do anything on Thursday. I, and he has to face Harrison Smith. I am fading TJ Hawkinson this week. Running backs Detroit uh, uh, of the Detroit Lions, DeAndre Swift, Jamal Williams. So here, bummer, Penny Sewell is is battling a bad ankle injury, and he's he if he plays, he's going to be well under 100 100% um, healthy. Now that said, looking at Patty Cooper's run defense uh, NEFF ratings, the Vikings are 29th in, in the NFL, tied for 29th in the NFL. So both of these guys are, are, are great starting options. I have Swift as a top like 13 play and Jamal Williams as an RB three. Kirk Cousins, he's going to get back on track this week. The Detroit Lions defense is terrible. They let go of Jamie Collins, Jeff Akuta tore his Achilles. Um, 
yeah, you can fire up at Kirk Cousins as a, a streaming option at quarterback one. Adam Thielen averaging 8.5 targets per game. Justin Jefferson, 9.25 targets per game. Those are both excellent numbers. Uh, Jefferson has actually pulled ahead of Adam Thielen in the red zone targets with 10 through four games. I think Thielen was at six. Both of these dudes, I think uh, Thielen's low end wide receiver one at work. I mean, maybe top 15 wide receiver, but I, I think he can do wide receiver one numbers here. And Jeff, Justin Jefferson definitely can. Um, KJ Os- Osborne and Tyler Conklin. We're just in a holding pattern at this point. I, I broke down all their usage in, in the piece, but it, it just kind of flip flops back and forth. I have Osborne as a wide receiver two, Conklin, uh, well, excuse me, wide receiver four, Conklin as a high end tight end two. So real bad news on Dalvin Cook here. He has, um, I included the link, but he has a high ankle sprain. And uh, what they're going to have him do is they're going to have him try to play through it. That's really stupid. They should shut him down and have Alexander Madison play. Um, and uh, yeah, so I am I am ranking Dalvin Cook as a volatile running back too, like back end running back two this week. Alexander Madison, he's a volatile running back four. Um, he needs to be rostered in 100% of leagues, but th- like, this is really bad. What the, what the Vikings are doing. They should not be starting Dalvin cook new Orleans saints at Washington football team. Okay. Uh, you can't start either of these quarterbacks. Jameis Winston is God awful. And now he has to play the Washington football team. I know that Washington has been tagged by opposing quarterbacks, but they've all been mobile guys. We're talking Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. Um, Winston is not mobile. Now who is mobile? Taysom Hill. Hill snaps have vaulted uh, north of the 50% mark uh, in the last, over the last two weeks. He's seen 12 carries for 60 yards and three TDs. He's sapping the usage out of everybody. If you were going to have one of the Saints quarterbacks on your roster, it should be Taysom Hill on your bench in a wait and see mode. Uh, do not start Marquez uh, Callaway or Deontay Harris. They are downfield receivers and they operate on low volume. Don't touch them. Uh, Ty Montgomery, nope, don't even think about it. Adam Troutman is a near full-time blocking tight end. Juwan Johnson barely plays. He has nine targets on the season and has scored like three times. You can't chase that usage. Alvin Kamara. So. He had 26 carries last week. First time in his NFL career that he did not see a single target. I know there was like a shovel pass or something that didn't didn't count. And you can say, okay, he got a target, whatever. It was one target. That's a big deal. If he's not getting passing game work, then we have to drop him in the running back one ranks a little bit. Now I still have him as a running back one. I have have him at at RB eight, but he's not the guy that you drafted with the like third overall pick. Um, And again, Washington's defensive front is, is very good. Now, He's going to get 20 plus carries. So, you know, again, running back one, but like we should reduce expectations just a hair. Um, And of course, supposedly that usage, the the lack of passing game usage was because Tony Jones Jr. ended up on injured reserve with an ankle sprain. Good idea, Vikings. Um, But it doesn't make sense to me why you would relegate your number one passing game weapon as a rush only component, especially with Taysom Hill. Like, yeah, it, it seems silly to me. You have him, you have to hill back there. You can get creative on the ground. You need to be lining up Kamara as a receiving weapon. Reichel Armstead has been signed to the practice squad. He is a north-south plotter. If they activate him, okay, great. Maybe it gets Kamara five targets and that would be sick. Washington football team, Taylor Haneke needs to be added in 100% of leagues. The dude is a quarterback one. Um, I know that there are folks out there, even on our own website, who don't think that he's very good. I don't think that he's great, but he is a serviceable NFL quarterback. And in fantasy, he is dynamite. Dude looks downfield. He has a cannon of an arm and he is a very good scrambler. Um, is there a good ball carrier? And so making matters worse for, for uh, um, New Orleans. Uh, defensive lineman Marcus Davenport and David Onyemata are out this week, along with starting inside linebacker Quan Alexander. I think Heineke can go for like 50 yards and maybe a touchdown on the ground. Uh, Terry McLaurin has not, so stat from Field Gates, uh, he has not dropped a pass uh, on 190 <laughs> targets. Um, yeah, what, Terry McLaurin's a wide receiver one. Um, okay, so with, with Logan Thomas out, uh, hamstring injury exited the game really early last week. The the guy who should be benefiting from this is Curtis Samuel. Uh, Diami Brown ha- is more of a downfield guy, has been used in the short area, but he's got a knee injury, was not able to practice Wednesday or Thursday. Curtis Samuel was eased back into the action last week. 37 snaps, four targets though on just 37 snaps. Um, if Curtis Samuel is able to go, he is the guy who's going to take on the majority of the Logan Thomas 
uh, target fallout. Adam Humphreys, if Curtis Samuel can't go, we'll see some, but he's only like a PPR or wide receiver four kind of a thing. Uh, if Curtis Samuel is active, borderline wide receiver two, wide receiver three. Tight end Ricky Seals Jones, he filled in, immediately saw work. He got two of four balls for 19 yards last week after Logan Thomas went out. I think that he's like, he's on the streaming radar. I don't like him a lot, but he's on the streaming radar. It's not a great sign, though, that they signed tight end Jay Sternberger. Um, okay, moving the backfield. So Antonio Gibson and Janie McKissick, I think that these two guys can like go the hell off here. Again, the defensive front in New Orleans is real banged up. I think McKib- uh, McKibson, Gibson can take. 20 touches for RB1 production, like no problem. Don't worry about the shin injury. It's just like a bruise. Um, so yeah, mid-tier running back one for Gibson and McKissick is a high floor uh, running back three. He has seasoned, uh, his highest single game target total this season is uh, six. I know he had like, you know, games of 14 and stuff last year. I think that he's going to be closer to that kind of a thing. Not 14, but I think like McKissick finishing with eight to 10 targets this week, super reasonable, especially with Logan Thomas out. He, he perhaps over Curtis Samuel might be the biggest guy to, to fill in, but with Diami Brown out, you know, yeah, I like Curtis Samuel this week. Um, New, New England Patriots at, at Houston Texans. This one is super simple. So there's a bit of a revenge narrative at play with, uh, you know, Bill Belichick. He lost to Tom Brady. I don't think that he's going to want to lose to Nick Casario, GM of the Houston Texans uh, this week. Not, you know, doesn't want to lose to disciples twice in a row here. Uh, Fortunately, he won't because the Houston Texans are the worst team in the NFL. Mac Jones is officially a mid to high quarterback too. Jacoby Myers, just like we talked about last week, he is the biggest beneficiary of James White's um, hip subluxation. He saw 12 targets. That was twice as many as the next closest Patriot. He's a high floor wide receiver too, like definitely this week and, and possibly from here on out. Um, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne. If you have Nelson Aguilar on your roster, this is the week to roll him out as a wide receiver three or four. Uh, again, Houston Texan defense, as bad as it gets. Kendrick Bourne, Super deep leagues PPR option, you know, wide receiver five or six. I'm not going flashy here, but he has seen work around the goal line, as we've talked about. Hunter Henry uh, is out snapping and running more routes than Johnny Smith. Uh, and and has caught more passes. He is Johnny Smith has seen one more target uh, over what is that? The last last three weeks. Now, anyway, the info will be in the piece, but um, yeah, Hunter Henry is seeing more work than Johnny Smith is. He's the guy that I want to bet on. Both of them are just high end uh, tight end twos, but against the Texans, like one of them should get it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if one gets in the end zone. The Texans are allowing 16.4 half point PPR points to opposing tight ends, second most in the NFL. Okay, Damian Harris, I broke this the hell down in here, but this is like Damian Harris uh, rocket ship week. If you play DFS, I highly recommend you getting him into your lineup. Again, Houston Texans defense, as bad as it gosh dang gets. Brandon Bolden retained pass catching running back duties and J.J. Taylor in like his lone target, he fumbled. So don't be surprised if you, if you see Ramondre Stevenson replace J.J. Taylor on the active roster this week. Uh, Brandon Bolden's like a running back four or five with a little upside in, in PPR. Um, I don't normally talk about DSTs, but New England Patriots defense should be the number one defense across the, the league this week. Uh, Bill Belichick is very good scheming against rookie quarterbacks, <laughs> Davis Mills. They're going to eat him alive. I am not going to be surprised if, if uh, the New England Patriots defense scores one or more touchdowns, strip sacks, interceptions, you name it. Don't start anybody on the Texans. The window for Brandon Cooks is temporarily temporarily closed, and uh, that was always going to crash and burn. Um, if he has a good performance, maybe next week, try to sell high. Miami Dolphins at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We already talked about Jalen Waddle at the beginning here, so I'll keep this one kind of simple. But basically, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers front seven is as good as it gets in the NFL. They are down Sean Murphy bunting. Uh, Carlton Davis and Antoine Winfield this week, all prominent, very good members of their secondary. Jacoby Brissett is a volatile quarterback too. Devontae Parker, I think he's a wide receiver three. High floor, um, high ceiling. Will Fuller's on injured reserve with a broken finger. Yeah, like I know it's not sexy, but Parker, wide receiver three this week. Jalen Waddell, I think he's in the same tier, uh, but, you know, he, he could rip it up. Uh, Mike Kosicki, tight end one, for all the reasons we talked about with Fuller. He just operates a little bit further down the field than Waller does, uh, than Waddle does. As far as the backfield goes, this is a full-blown three-way committee. 
don't don't touch any of them. I'm, I'm so, if uh, there's a reason that I, I recommended you not draft any of these guys, and it's it's too bad because Gaskin is is a fun player. Um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So Miami's pass defense is very good, but they're dealing with some pretty serious injuries. Uh, cornerback Byron Jones. So Byron Jones and, and Xavier Howard are like the two best. That's the best cornerback duo in the NFL. Jones has a quadricep and Achilles injury. Xavier Howard didn't write his injury down, but he's been, uh, he went from full participant to limited participant and Byron Jones went, did not participate to limited. They'll probably both play, but they're banged up. Tom Brady's going to take advantage of that. He's a quarterback one. Mike Evans, again, this is another one of those voluminous uh, ones where like I just broke this down in depth in the piece, but Evans, I've got him as a wide receiver one. Chris Godwin, I think a wide receiver two. Antonio Brown, a borderline wide receiver two slash wide receiver three. Cam Brate and OJ Howard, they uh, split the tight end reps nearly 50 50, uh, but Brate ran 31 routes to OJ Howard's 15 and out targeted him six to two. I know we flopped in the box score, but Miami is allowing 12.8 half point PPR points per game. That's a top 10 mark. I think that that Cameron Bright is a solid streamer. <clears throat> Sorry, a little cough there, guys. Um, Green Bay Packers at Cincinnati Bengals. So the Bengals have a number of standout defensive players, but they do not have a good overall defense. Aaron Rodgers, quarterback one this a quarterback one this week. Devontae Adams, an elite wide receiver one. <clears throat> Marcus Valdez-Scantling has been placed on injured reserve. I believe it was with a hamstring injury. It was really not good uh, for Alan Lazard that uh, the fact that that Randall Cobb operated well ahead of him in the pecking order last week. Lazard has always been a guy who's just kind of elevated by Rodgers and because Rodgers liked him. But the fact that Rodgers, you know, forced the team to bring Cobb back seems as though he's got a new best friend on here. Um, so I'm treating Randall Cobb as like a oh man, it, like wide receiver five, high end wide receiver four. Uh, he's got full point PPR wide receiver three upside. Amari Rogers is playing for next year and you can ignore Alan Lazard too. Um, Robert Tanyan is a standard volatile tight end one. Very good. Good quarterback. Doesn't see work some of the time. <clears throat> Aaron Jones. So I, Aaron Jones was pretty funny last week because he still had like 99 yards from scrimmage, caught a few passes, uh, but they were just blowing their team out. So AJ Dillon got some run, but it's, it's great when you have a running back who totals nearly 100 yards from scrimmage and that's considered a down week. Jones, he's back on the top five running back radar this week. AJ Dillon, he's more of a bench dash. <clears throat> Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, okay, so we talked about why we think Jamar Chase can just slay this uh, Packers secondary. Accordingly, I like Joe Burrow as a quarterback. Uh, I like him as a quarterback one. Um, it's a little bit shaky, he, but yeah, I, I like him as a quarterback one. One thing that there seems to be a lot of confusion as to uh, Zach Taylor's play calling. I don't really understand that. Um, if you go back and read the divisional breakdowns that I did this, this uh, offseason, Zach Taylor very clearly alters his play calling depending on the state of his quarterback. And so last year when Burrow was in, they were throwing the ball a ton on first half early downs, showing you like what they want to be as an offense. Once Burrow was injured, they scaled it way back. I think a lot of people failed to realize how significant Burrow's knee injury was. Something like a third of players don't actually even come back from this and 50% aren't starters. He tore every single ligament in his knee. Um, I think it was every single, I mean, it was ACL, PCL, MCL meniscus. I maybe he didn't tear his LCL, um, but it, he was always going to be a more hobbled version of himself. And he, he was coming back like at the very beginning of his possible return window. I did, the the play calling was always going to be a little bit more conservative for at least the first month or two while Joe Burrow was was rehabbing his knee. Uh, as we're progressing through the season and he's staying healthy and killed it last week when they went empty with no running back in the backfield. They're going to crank that passing rate up. So stay strong with Burrow. And if you can perhaps get him on a buy low, you should totally do that. Uh, T Higgins is, uh, is returning. Oh, oh, wanted to mention Jamar Chase placed uh, number one in Petty Cooper's new uh, consistency rankings. Uh, they're called uh, NEC and ECC. No, they're not about Davis Mills. Bad joke. Um, but yeah, they're, uh, they basically, as I understand it, they sort of measure a player's natural variation or a deviation from their mean, I think. Um, I'm still learning about it, but yeah, 
don't hate somebody who's coming in at number one, Jamar Chase. Okay, so T. Higgins was battling a shoulder injury. He should be back this week, which means that he and Tyler Boyd are going to be duking it out for number two and three wide receiver duties. I think that they're both high floor wide receiver threes. TJ Uzoma, uh, we recommended you didn't start him in redraft, but did tell you to start him in DFS or at least recommend it. Thought it'd be a good idea given the matchup. He smashed, so hip hip hooray. Uh, this week the against the Packers, Packers are allowing 13.5 half point PPR points per game to opposing tight ends, seven the most in the NFL. I think that Uzoma is still on the tight end one streaming radar, but the return of T Higgins may just reduce his volume so much so that the matchup doesn't matter. Uh, Joe Mixon, was reported by Adam Schefter to be week to week. Zach Taylor, who talks a bunch of BS about injuries, is trying to say that he's day-to-day. He's not practicing this week. He's not going to play. So my JP Ryan, Chris Evans are going to uh, split backfield duties. My estimate, my workload estimate for these guys, P Ryan is going to get around 15 carries, maybe more, uh, with three to five targets. I think that Chris Evans comes in with like probably five targets minimum could go up to seven or eight. He is the preferred pass, pass catching back. He's very good in the passing game. Uh, I'm looking at P Ryan as a high end running back three and Evans as a running back four with RB three upside, especially in full point PPR Denver Broncos at Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. So Teddy Bridgewater, it was looking like Drew Locke was going to be the starting quarterback this week because Teddy Bridgewater was concussed, but Teddy has returned to practice in a limited fashion with puts, puts him on pace to play. The Steelers have a talented defense, but one that is constantly under duress because Ben Roethlisberger is friggin' awful. I think that Teddy Bridgewater is a high floor quarterback too. Locke would be a volatile quarterback too uh, if he were to get the start. Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick. So with 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 Locke at the helm, he is a volatile wide receiver three. Uh, I charted all of their passing attempts, and I, it'll be in the the actual rundown piece. Uh, he Locke tried to feed Sutton. He's just not accurate, so he couldn't get it to him. But he was, I think, either the the most targeted receiver. Um, or, or uh, excuse me, tied with Noah Fant as like most targeted pass catchers. So yeah, I like Sutton with either quarterback as a wide receiver three, Tim Patrick, high floor wide receiver four. If Bridgewater plays but wide receiver five, if it's Locke, he didn't really look Tim Patrick's way. Jante Spencer was knocked out with a chest injury, has not been able to practice this week. He was starting slot receiver in place of KJ Hamler. Uh, Kendall Hinton filled in and they could not get anything going with uh, between he and Locke. I don't think that that hidden will really be much of a thing with uh, Bridgewater at the helm either. Now, t- uh, Noah Fant, this is very interesting. It sucks for Albert Aquag Boonham, but he suffered a hamstring injury in practice Thursday. Dude's not playing this week. No, and now he was only stealing like a couple targets a game, but a couple targets goes a long way. Like, you know, if you're looking at a box where you see six targets for a tight end, okay, that's decent. Eight targets, that's good. Um, no offense to tight end one this week. Running backs, uh, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon. So hysterically, Javante Williams, he ripped off that big, beautiful run. It was fantastic, but Melvin Gordon is still just crushing it. He is a- averaging 4.9 yards per carry. That's 13th in the NFL. I broke down all their usage here. They're neck and neck. Melvin Gordon's not going anywhere. You can get excited about Javante Williams all you want, and he is pass blocking very well, which is going to help him get on the field more in passing downs. But Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon is not is not leaving uh, this this offense. So I I have both of these guys as running back threes. Pittsburgh Steelers, okay. Ben Roethlisberger, do not start him. Then Von Miller is going to live behind the 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 Steelers offensive line. They are terrible. Deontay Johnson is a volume based wide receiver too. Oh man. Uh, and it's, it sucks because these guys are so good, but yeah, volume based wide receiver two, chase Claypool, volatile wide receiver four. Juju is a, maybe a high floor wide receiver five in full point PPR, uh, James Washington bench dash. If you got him a dynasty, hold on to him. He, his contracts up at the end of this year. You can look for him next year. Pat fire tight end, not fantasy relevant with Eric Ebron out there. Um, Najee Harris is still going to get a ton of touches. He may get spelled a little bit more. Anthony McFarland is returning from injured reserve and he's better than Benny Snell is. So I think that he might see a little bit more work in a, on a regular basis than uh, Benny Snell was, but not enough to knock Najee out of, I think I've got him running back 13 this week. Um, yeah, not enough to knock Najee out of the, uh, the top 15. Uh, were Najee to miss time, Anthony McFarland is a, Alexander Mattis, Madison type of uh, replacement running back for fantasy purposes. 
Uh, Philadelphia Eagles at Carolina Panthers. We already hit on Devontae Smith, wide receiver two this week, but Jalen Hurts averaging 56.5 rushing yards per game. Uh, he is developing as a passer, and the Carolina Panthers secondary is nothing to be afraid of yet. Hurts is an elite wide or a quarterback one. Okay, I'm really excited about this uh, next part here. They, they play somewhat different positions. Quez Watkins mostly operates in the slot, Rager mostly on the perimeter, uh, but Watkins has seen big time improvements in his snaps and routes run over the last two weeks. And he finally out-targeted Jalen Rager last week, uh, seven to two. That's huge. Watkins is like four, three blazing speed and he's good and Rager's not. So um, add Watkins while you can. I have him as a high-end wide receiver four this week with wide receiver three potential. Jalen Rager is a wide receiver five. Uh, Greg Ward has been very efficient. Uh, Okay, I think he was actually just activated last week, um, and he was efficient. He, he played well on the limited work that he got. I hope that the Eagles realize that Quez Watkins, Greg Ward, and Devontae Smith are the best three wide receivers that they have. Um, Greg Ward is only like a, a speculative bench stash at this point. Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz. Goddard is just a way better blocker, so he's being asked to do that a little bit more than Ertz is, which, and, and Ertz is getting more passing game usage, so both of them are tight end twos. I prefer Ertz um, for fantasy football. Kenneth Gainwell, Miles Sanders broke it all down in here. Um, the, the usage is starting to trend towards t- Kenneth Gainwell. He does not have ownership of like snaps yet uh, or carries or routes, but he out-targeted him 10 to 6 over the last two weeks. Sanders, that is. Uh, Nick Sirianni did not draft Miles Sanders. He drafted Kenneth Gainwell. Gainwell is a little bit undersized, but he's not too undersized. It looks like what they want to do is run with a Naheem Hines type back, which Miles Sanders can do. We broke this all down on Monday. You don't need to hear it again. Gainwell, running back three. Sanders is a running back four. Carolina Panthers. Sam Darnold is miraculously the number one uh, rushing touchdown scorer in the NFL right now with five. Uh, Fortunately, we flagged this for you guys in week two or after week two. Uh, Darnold is both getting schemed carries in scoring position and is scrambling when it's there the dude is a quarterback one in fantasy he still looks a little wonky he's he's got bad footwork but he's getting it done joe brady offensive coordinator is an absolute play calling phenom and we should all be really excited about what the uh what he's going to do in the future um don't think too much about matt rule after this year Just double checking the notes to see if there's anything. No, uh, you you get it. Uh, Darnold is is excellent. Oh, and um, with the loss of Brandon Graham, you know the the uh, Eagles have struggled to rush the passer, um, and, and just play defense up front overall. So yeah, Sam Darnold, he's a quarterback one, like right, like quarterback five, six, maybe seven, uh, for this week. DJ Moore, every single uh, week, wide receiver one. I put a cool graphic in there from Sam Hoppin to show what kind of a target hog he is. It is glorious. Uh, Matt Rule made good on scheming up touches for Robbie Anderson that last week. Now, it didn't pan out in the box score, but he saw 11 friggin' targets. That's a lot. He has, he has put distance between himself and Terrace Marshall. Robbie Anderson, wide receiver three. Terrace Marshall, probably wide receiver five. Uh, Tight end Tommy Tremble is not a thing. He totally flopped last week. Christian McCaffrey looks like he might already be uh, relegating Chuba Hubbard and Rodney Smith, uh, Royce Freeman, question mark, uh, back to the bench. Christian McCaffrey practiced in a limited fashion on his injured hamstring. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, he's, he's trending towards playing. Guys are typically volatile in their return from hamstring injuries, but if Christian McCaffrey's there, I'll probably rank him running back two behind Derrick Henry. Um, in terms of the this the the Christian McCaffrey less uh, backfield touches last week, what we saw was Chuba Hubbard is the lead running back. He did not get a ton of passing game work. They didn't really like what they saw out of him. He got two of two targets for four passes, or excuse me, fourteen yards. But uh, Roddy Smith, fascinating guy, played for six years in college. Uh, you can go look it up. Really interesting. Uh, he caught five of five balls. It was when they were trying to catch up. So it was like fully in passing game script and that's who they wanted in there. Royce Freeman, just completely ignore him. Um, congrats to Dwayne McFarland on the win over your troll in the comments. Um, anyway, if Chua Hubbard, if Christian McCaffrey is inactive, I think Chua Hubbard is like borderline running back two slash three. I can double check the, uh, the ranks real quick here to see where I have, yeah, okay, I've got him, yeah, uh, running back 28, and Rodney Smith is, like, probably borderline running back three, running back four, you know, obviously big boost in full-point PPR formats. Um, Tennessee Titans at Jacksonville Jaguars. 
whew, this one's going to be a fun one. So only one quarterback failed to throw for 300 yards against the Jaguars defense. And that was before they got rid of CJ Henderson. Um, that, that player who failed to hit 300 yards was Tyrod Taylor, who, you know, washed up quarterback on the worst team in the NFL, Houston Texans. And he only missed it by nine yards. He threw for 291. So Tannehill top 12 play this week. Good news. AJ Brown, like Christian McCaffrey returning from hamstring injury. Although uh, AJ Brown is already practicing in full, which is kind of funny because he got an unlimited practice on Wednesday and to start the season, just as he was like, easing his prepared menisci uh, back into action. He wasn't even practicing on Wednesdays, but now he's practicing Wednesday in limited capacity and he got into full practice uh, on Thursday. So like ceiling or uh, wheels are up for AJ Brown, Julio Jones, not practicing. So like, I'm not kidding here. AJ Brown could see 15 targets against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. AJ Brown is an immediate wide receiver one upon his return. We'll have a big table in here for you to show you the uh, the wide receiver usage. Uh, last week, Chester Rogers, Josh Reynolds, N uh, Nick Westbrook, Akeen. Long story short, we freaking nailed it, you guys. We absolutely nailed what the wide receiver usage would be with AJ Brown and Julio Jones out. Love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Um, so Chester Rogers is going to maintain slot receiver duties this week. Uh, Nick Westbrook Akeen is probably going to be relevated to either just riding the pine or a rotational role. He is the guy who directly replaced AJ Brown in that inside outside uh, receiver role. Josh Reynolds should stick to the perimeter in, in place of uh, Julio Jones. Now there is an outcome that could occur where uh, Reynolds is deactivated. We, we talked about this previously. He doesn't play special teams. So if they say, okay, Nick West for Keen, he can actually play on the perimeter. We don't need to ship him inside into the slot. Maybe we just deactivate Reynolds again. That could happen. I don't think it will, but it could. Um, so I'm considering him, you know, he and Westbrook Keen, like volatile, you know, wide receiver four is probably Westbrook Keen, probably wide receiver five. Um, Chester Rogers is. So he's going to go up against Trey Herndon, who we picked on last week with Tyler Boyd. That was a really fun piece to write. It was another one that like kind of knocked out of the park. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's nice when these, when these matchups become very self-evident, like right off the bat. So Jag slot receiver, uh, or excuse me, slot cornerback Trey Herndon uh, returned from injury last week and he got blown up for six catches on seven targets, 90 yards and one touchdown. I think that Chester Rogers is a wide receiver, high end wide receiver. Anthony Berkser distanced himself from the rest of the tight end pack in Tennessee last week. CJ Uzoma um, obviously played very well against the Jaguars last week, five of six targets, 95 yards and two touchdowns. I think that Anthony Berkser is back on the tight end streaming radar. Um, yeah, it's a great matchup here. Okay, Derrick Henry, um, you know, big dog turning into Fenrir once again. Uh, his performances against the Jaguars are legendary. Like he just eats them alive. And I think that there's I like I'm I'm even if Christian McCaffrey is active, I'm keeping Derrick Henry as the overall running back one. In terms of Derek, uh, Darrington Evans and Jeremy McNichols. So McNichols, this was another one we flagged. This was so cool that this 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 bore out. Um, Jeremy McNichols had access to a full point PPR uh, healthy outing last week, given the matchup. He had 12 targets, eight catches, 74 yards. Those were team leading marks. At least the targets were. Um, Darrington Evans is expected to come off injured reserve, but but with McNichols playing like that, I don't think that Evans is just going to come back and take the job. I think he's going to have to earn it. So McNichols. Um, Maybe just like a, a, you know, volatile running back four. Um, but I, I wouldn't just cut him just because Evans is, is coming back. And if they have another, you know, shootout matchup or, or one where they're playing a front seven that is especially bad against pass catching backs, like Mick Nichols could be fired up in a multi-flex full point PPR league. Evans, go, or uh, Darrington Evans, go, go ahead and add him if you want, but put him on the bench. In terms of the Jacksonville Jaguars, so we know about everything that's going on with Urban Meyer. It is a total shit show. Um, his behavior is outrageous. The Michael Lombardi is reporting that uh, that the the ownership tried to find a way at, with like morality clauses if they could figure out a way to to, to dump Urban Meyer without having to pay him. My, and, and so, geez, this was awful. So Meyer like. His apologies to the team were apparently really awful and insufficient, and people were laughing at him as soon as he walked out of the room. He canceled team meetings. What I think is going to happen, either he just commits fully to his Meyerdom and like 
tanks this week uh, out of idiocy, not not purposefulness, um, but uh, not out of intent. But um, what I think he might do is turn over the offensive reins to offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel. Now, Bevel is not the most... Um, you know, analytically inclined guy, but he, he does scheme up a very good downfield passing attack, which I think would bode well for Trevor Lawrence. I think Lawrence can finish uh, inside the top 15 at the position and Tennessee's defense is like, it is just limping around there. Everybody's banged up. I think they set the record or something with like 23 total players, not just defense, but total players um, on their injury report this week. So Marvin Jones and Livy Schenault wheels are up for them. DJ Chark, really unfortunate, broke his ankle really badly, probably out for the whole season. Um, Marvin Jones, he kind of flopped. That was too bad. But against the Tennessee Titans, I think that he's going to get right back at it as a wide receiver too. LaVisca Chenault, though, this was wild. So uh, Chenault's uh, average depth of target was 4.1 yards for the first three weeks of the NFL season. Chark left early last week, and that average depth of target launched up to 11.8 in week four for LaVisca. So like LaVisca, he is back as a wide receiver three. I think he could even finish as a wide receiver two. Um, Taylon Austin was the number three receiver in the offense. He's like a wide receiver six. Don't go near him. Dan Arnold, tight end two. Um, okay, bizarre stuff going on with the backfield. So Carlos Hyde was a surprise inactive. He was not listed on the, the injury report at all last week, but was inactive. This week, he shows up on the injury report with a shoulder injury after not playing all week last week. Like he started the week with a shoulder injury. So don't know what's going on there. Um, James Robinson, though, balled out. He rushed for 78 yards, two touchdowns on the ground, had like a failed screen pass, I think, in the receiving game that he lost two yards on. But um I've got him pegged as an elite running back too this week. Now, here, and Dorea Gunbawale just like flailed around behind Robinson. Um, he, you know, he could succeed in the right situation. This isn't it. I think that with Meyer feeling the heat and likely turning things over to Bevel, I don't think that they're going to go back to Hyde. Hyde was like one of Meyer's like, you know, beer and wings guys kind of a thing. Um, and given what's going on, I think if Meyer is seen making favoritism type decisions with his personnel, he's going to he's going to catch a lot of flack. So I am banking on James Robinson as being a high end running back two this week. I was really excited about him as a running back one until I realized the Carlos Hyde like strangeness going on here where, cause last like, last week I thought they just deactivated him because he's really awful and washed up and they wanted Robinson in there, but it, due to the fact that it could have been an injury. Now there's a little more uncertainty. So high end running back two for Robinson onto the afternoon games, one Oh five to one twenty five uh, PM slate. Cleveland Browns at Los Angeles Chargers. So I don't understand. This was news today on Thursday that Baker Mayfield um, suffered a partial tear in his uh, uh, labrum, uh, in his non-throwing shoulder. That's what happens when you partially dislocate a shoulder. It's called a subluxation. And the only way that that com can come out is if the labrum partially tears or if it, it tears, period. Um, Mayfield reported this a couple of weeks ago, like when it happened, I think it was week three. Uh, he said that it, 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 it popped he said it popped out and it popped back in. That's a subluxation. It was partially out, partially in. Like you can't have, you can't, that can't happen. I have torn labrums. You can't, that can't happen without um, partially tearing it. So I, the fact that like, I, it might've been Ian Rappaport just, you know, trying to get in the news, uh, but it's now being reported as, oh, he has a torn labrum. Yeah, no crap. And that's why, you know, I, I was kind of, I was kind of concerned about Mayfield potentially fumbling just because he, in practice, he was handing the ball off with just his, he had won his throwing shoulder. He's trying to protect his, his left shoulder. Um, interesting questions about, you know, should a, a quarterback go after a guy after he throws an interception or should he try to protect himself at all costs? I don't know at the end of the day, if this is really impacting his throwing motion, maybe the pain is messing with his head, but regardless, uh, Chargers pass defense comes in six best in Patty Cooper's, uh, Pete, pass defense, any FF ratings. I'm not going near Baker Mayfield. He's a low end quarterback too this week. He also just could not get on the same page with Odo Beckham Jr. Oh, that was so ugly. Beckham is, is a volatile wide receiver three. Um, it's a very tough matchup. If, in fact, if you feel good about a wide receiver four in your roster, bench Beckham for him. Uh, Richard Higgins, he got he got going as the fill and slot receiver last week a little bit. I mean, you know, like eight half point PPR points kind of a thing. He's a, a floor play wide receiver. I don't know, five, maybe six. It's not a good scenario. I can't reiterate that enough. Um, ignore the other receivers. They're they're not relevant right now. 
uh, tight ends, Austin Hooper and Harrison Bryant. So David Njoku, he is dealing with a knee injury and, and failed to practice both Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Um, Hooper is suddenly on the streaming radar. I don't think he's very good. Uh, streaming option. Like I think he's more of a tight end too than anything else. Uh, he's going up against Derwin friggin' James. So I, I don't, I'm not banking on him, but like if you've got some crazy scenario and you need someone, you could look at Austin Hooper, Harrison Bryant. I think he'll be the tight end there, tight end one there one day. Right now he's just a tight end three. Um, as far as the backfield goes, so Kareem Hunt has just been straight up outplaying Nick Chubb. I think that they can kind of get back on track though. The Chargers are allowing 114.2 running back rushing yards per game, not just rushing yards, but running back rushing yards per game. That's fifth most in the NFL. Um, Chubb's going to eat on early down. So I, I think that we can keep him as a back end running back one. Kareem Hunt is of course a high end running back too, but it might just be start. It might just be time to like rank Hunt and Chubb one after the other, and maybe even putting Hunt one spot ahead of him. Um, yeah, it, it's just really good. I mean, he didn't lose his job in Kansas city because of, uh, because of talent, both. So in other words, both backs are top 15 options in a very good matchup this week. Okay. On the Chargers side of things, Justin Herbert. So the, the Browns defense is so good. And, and miles Garrett is looking like the defensive player of the year right now. I'm not removing Herbert from my, my quarterback one ranks though. The play volume might be reduced and that might be his downfall if he like, you know, finishes quarterback 12 instead of quarterback four or something like that. Um, just because the, the Browns might try to con control the clock a little bit, but Herbert is so friggin' good. And like the, the clip, go seek it out if you, if you haven't seen it, but Brandon Staley talking about how you don't need to run the ball well um, in order to throw play action. Yes, the data has been there for years now. The run game has zero impact on play action. Think about it. You're not training a linebacker to close on the ball carrier um, on the third carry. They've learned that. They've got that nailed into their muscle memory since they were 12 years old. Uh, so th this, this coaching staff is just, I think it's too good to, to fade, even though it's a tough matchup. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, maybe drop expectations a little bit, but they're still top 12 wide receivers this week for me. Jalen Guyton, Josh Palmer. Guyton still owns significantly more snaps than, than Palmer does on a weekly basis, but neither one of them is fantasy relevant. Jared Cook got like seven targets last week. Good for you, buddy. Um, he's still very old. Uh, I don't think that either one of them is is a, a recommended start in, in fantasy in, or in redraft this week. I'm still looking to bench, uh, bench stash Donald Parham, but Cook, he is playing – he played well. I'll admit it. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately for uh, my boy, Justin, J Justin Jackson, he, I think suffered. Oh yeah. So he, so Justin Jackson went from limited participation in practice last week. Uh, oh no, excuse me. On, um, on, on Wednesday with a, a groin injury uh, to a DNP on uh, today on Thursday. So uh, that means Larry Roundtree is going to be filling in. Now I don't think that Larry Roundtree is going to be like, a, uh, I don't think Larry Rentree is going to be a, a, a meaningful, um, just making sure I thought I had an audio thing going on here, but I'm, we're all good. Uh, I don't think Larry Rentree is going to be a meaningful contributor this week, but Austin Eckler will be. I have him as a top five running back. He's got 68 touches on the year, 10th most in the NFL. We know how efficient he is and what a great offense this is and what a great offensive line this is. Chicago Bears, Las Vegas Raiders. We saw some good stuff with Justin Fields last week that was probably partially due to the fact that Matt Nagy was forced to give up play calling duties to offensive coordinator Bill Lazor. Um, we liked that a lot. They focused on downfield passing, which is Justin Fields' forte, and Darnell Mooney was the, the team leader in targets. The Las Vegas Raiders have really struggled against mobile quarterbacks this season. Lamar Jackson took 12 carries for 86 yards. Jacoby Brissett took seven carries for 37 yards and one touchdown. I think that this is finally the week that Justin Fields uh, rushing floor is unlocked. I have him as a high-end quarterback too. Um, in terms of Allen Robinson, although Mooney was the team leader in targets, uh, Robinson went three of three for, for 63 yards. So Robinson, wide receiver two, Darna Mooney, wide receiver three. Um, it's an unimposing matchup and the Raiders are missing one of their starting quarterbacks. Uh, I think it's Trayvon Mullen Jr. Cole Komet, he's not going to get enough usage uh, but for right now, just it's low volume, volume passing attack, but you could uh, stash them on the bench if you wanted to. On the subject of passing volume, this this uh, this is uh, perhaps, well, no, it, it, it actually, it's, it's very relevant in, in both regards. So in weeks one and two with Andy Dalton, that quarterback, um, Chicago was running the ball on 
percent, 50 percent of first half early downs. That was tied for eighth most in the NFL in weeks three and four with Justin Fields under center. They ran the ball an average of 67 percent of the time on first half early downs. That's first in the NFL by a six percent margin. That's massive. Hat tip to sharpfootballstats.com for having that info. I recommend everybody going and playing with their uh, with their usage uh, pages. They're fantastic. Um, so Cole Komet is just not going to get enough work, but you could bench stash him. This is the quarterback tight end duo of the future there, and they're going to want to try to get these guys on the same page. It's pretty funny. I think Komet had like a 19 uh, point zero average depth of target, which is you know probably the, the deepest he'll ever see. Um, that was last week, but uh, yeah, not not fantasy relevant this week. We we already talked about why Damian Williams is a high end running back too this week. Khalil Herbert is a bench stash. Las Vegas Raiders. <clears throat> so this will probably be a tough one for Derek Carr to return to like his really high or mid to high uh, quarterback one ways, uh, fantasy football quarterback one ways. Um, because the Chicago Bears pass rush is, is really, really good. Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack, that's a hell of a one-two punch. Um, last week, I think it was oh God, uh, the was jo- Joey Bosa was talking about how they noticed on film that if they, if they put a couple of hits on, on, on Derek Carr, he kind of gets skittish and will tuck and run. And I've linked to it in the piece, but he like that there's a follow-up image where you see a rusher is like two yards away and Derek Carr is like, going fetal or like putting a, you know, um, bull guard. What is that? The, the Mendoza guard. There you go. If anybody was into, was that British boxing in the 1800s, you'll get what I'm saying there. Um, he was a heavyweight five foot seven or something weighed 190 pounds or, or no, excuse me. Anyway, 150, I think it was crazy times, but, um, needless to say, Derek Hart, uh, shelled up. I've got him in as a quarterback one slash two this week, like quarterback 13, maybe, um, the ability is there, the play calling is there, surprisingly, and the, the talent is there. But yeah, it's a tough matchup for him. Henry Ruggs and Hunter Refro have like completely distanced themselves from uh, Brian Edwards. They are the receivers that you want to start. And the Chicago Bears uh, are giving up 36.9 half point PPR points per game to, to opposing wide receivers, fourth most in the NFL. Start them both. Henry Ruggs, high floor, like crazy high ceiling wide receiver three, Hunter Renfro as high of a floor as you could possibly imagine for a wide receiver three. And he's been targeted around the goal line a lot. Uh, dude is, is still, I mean, he might even be a, a wide receiver two in full point PPR formats. Darren Waller, every, every week, uh, tight end one. Um, crazy stuff going on with Josh J- Jacobs usage here. So he returned um, Peyton Barber, who I was so high on. He, he suffered a turf toe injury. So Jacobs, he just, he took control of the backfield. This was what we thought some thought what he was going to have like usage wise since they drafted him as a rookie. And, but no Gruden has been designating someone as the pass catching back. Not this week, you guys. So Jacobs ran 22 routes per pro football focus to Drake's 15. He had more routes run. He caught five of five passes for 17 yards to Drake's zero targets. If this usage holds Josh Jacobs has access to, like easy peasy running back one uh, viability in fantasy. I'm ranking him this week as a mid, probably more a low running back too, just because it is a brutal matchup against a really talented uh, Bears front seven. But I'm relegating uh, Kenyon Drake to running back five status, running back six status. This is exciting. San Francisco 49ers at Arizona Cardinals. So Trey Lance came in last week after Jimmy Garoppolo um, suffered a calf contusion. Um, Kyle Shanahan continues his weird, stupid um, management style of like shaming his players. You know, he was talking shit about Trey Lance, Trey Lance's performance. Lance came in, he played, he came at after at halftime, he, he, uh, he attempted five fewer passes than Jimmy Garoppolo did. And he still finished with just eight yards fewer than Garoppolo did passing. Now he also took seven or seven carries for 41 yards on the ground. And he connected with Debo Samuel for two touchdowns. One of which was a 76 yarder. Um, Shanahan, so Garoppolo didn't practice either Wednesday or Thursday, but you know, Shanahan saying, Oh, if he can practice on Friday, then he'll start. If that's the case, demote him, demote him to offensive coordinator, stop giving up control of the team. Uh, in terms of trail line, so if he's the quarterback one, if he's the starter there, he is a quarterback one in fantasy. Um, I recognize Arizona Cardinals front seven is very good, but no, quarterback one here. Uh, Debo Samuel, it was great to see that 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 Debo just got lit up with targets. Uh, he's a wide receiver one. 
Brandon Ayuk, Trent Sherfield, Mohamed Sanum. Sherfield's shown the most chemistry with Lance, but all these guys are too fluky. They are, you know, boom bust, like multi-flex options only. I'm, I'm not trying to start any of them. George Kittle didn't get a whole lot of work from Lance, but he did see 10 touchdowns on the whole. Uh, the, the game plan definitely involved Kittle, uh, even though it was um, Garoppolo who was throwing to him more than, than, uh, than Lance was. George Kittle went uh, DNP, DNP, limited participant last week. He has done two DNPs this week. As long as he gets limited action in on Friday, he is good to go as an elite tight end one. Uh, this will be another one where I broke down all of the, uh, the, the backfield usage in this one in a, in a table. You guys will have all of your questions answered there. Long story short, Eli Mitchell saw a little line of passing game usage when he was the starter weeks one and two, effective starter weeks one and two. Trey Sermon saw a little bit. Kyle, you said use, uh, use checks, pa- game, game, passing game usage has increased over time. I think if Eli Mitchell is inactive, Trey Sermon is a running back too, and Kyle Usechek could be used in, you know, like a zero RB team in full point PPR scoring. That's it. If Eli Mitchell is active, both he and Trey Sermon are running back threes. I think they're going to have mostly rushing centric um, workloads, but Mitchell is like the the lightning rusher, and and Trey Sermon is the rumbling thunder. They don't they will take touches from each other, but not their style of work. If that makes sense, I think both guys can hit, hit like fifteen touches. Uh, Uzcheck probably re- reverts. It, it, maybe he'll keep his like four. I think he's had back-to-back games of four targets. Maybe he gets that again, but he's mostly going to go back to being a blocker. Uh, Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray, quarterback one. Don't even overthink it. I know the 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 Niners front seven is good, but stop thinking about it. Um, DeAndre Hopkins. Basically, the the Cards just have a lot of passing game weapons, and DeAndre Hopkins has not had to be a, a target hog. I, th- I think he's still a wide receiver one based on talent and quarterback and scheme, but you know, he's, he's not an elite uh, wide receiver one this week. He is just a wide receiver one. Um, AJ Green. So dude went Mark of the beast, six, six, six targets weeks uh, one through three did it again in week four. So he's, you know, now free, free of the, <laughs> the beast's um, view, but most notably his snap share shot up. It, it went way up in week four. He was, I think operating around like 50%. And I, I think he went up to either high 60s or, or 70% um, in in week four. So like I, I'm I'm in on AJ Green. Yeah, it was, uh, actually I need to correct that. I was looking at his, his total snaps. The the rate did not really change that much. It was just a high, high scoring game. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to edit that because uh, he, he went 55, 51, 53 and 67 total snaps. That was not the percentages. Confuse the percentages with the raw data. My apologies. Anyway, AJ Green gets six targets a week. And uh, yeah, the Niners don't, their their cornerbacks are not really um, start AJ Green as wide receiver three. That's what I'm getting at. Christian Kirk, Ronnie Elmore, they're flip-flopping as rotational slot receivers. And while it's great for the team, it's a pain in the butt for us. I think Christian Kirk is a volatile wide receiver four. I think that Ronnie Elmore is a volatile wide receiver five. Max Williams, if you want to chase this, go for it. He's had two good games this season, and that's like two more than he's had in his seven or eight year career. Um, I'm not going after this. He's a risky tight end too. Chase Edmonds, Dude it has been crushing it in his volume, but uh, like I, just phenomenal usage. But then he showed up. Uh, he, he got dinged at the end of last last week with a shoulder injury, and I th- believe he's registered back to back. Did not participate so on Wednesday and Thursday. Not looking like he's going to play. If he does, then okay, great. I think he's a, a like mid tier running back too. Um, James Connor is a running back three. I would vault. Connor up from RB three to high end running back two because the dude is dominating. I mean, dominating red zone or, or rather like inside the five um, usage for this team. And this is a team that scores a lot. James Connor can, can like, I, I would, I would bet that he finds the end zone again this week. And if he's the lead back, then he's going to get, you know, 15 to 18 touches. That'll be great. New York giants at Dallas Cowboys. Daniel Jones continued his uh, wondrously volatile ways last week. He, he was uh, a massive uh, point scorer. You know, I, the, the, I, 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 he was massive point scorer against the New Orleans Saints. There were reasons to fade him. He finishes the quarterback six on the week. 
some of it was uh, due to rushing. Point is, the the guy the guy is is playing fairly well. Jason Garrett is always going to create a scary environment, but the Cowboys are allowing twenty five point five to opposing quarterbacks, fourth most in the NFL. If you want to start Daniel Jones as quarterback one, I say go for it. Uh, so Kenny Galladay took over as wide receiver one on the team with slot receiver Sterling Shepard out last week. He played very well. I think that he can be a high-end wide receiver three, maybe finish as a wide receiver two. Um, Darius Slayton is also injured. I think both guys have hamstring injuries, Slayton and um, Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard. So John Ross came out of nowhere and in perfect John Ross fashion scored on a 52 yard touchdown. But of course he fumbled right before the uh, end zone and managed to recover it and score. Uh, he filled in for Slayton Kadarius. Tony filled in for Sterling Shepard. Dude is still very raw, but the volume they're running on, you know, preferable matchups um, in the slot. Like, yeah, he can get it done. So I've got, I've got Kenny Galladay as a wide receiver three with wide receiver two potential. I have John Ross as a boom bust wide receiver four, and I have uh, Kadarius Tony due to the high volume short area nature um, of his slot receiver role as a wider, as a high floor wide receiver four and, you know, good upside in, in full point PPR. Um, that is, of course, if Sterling Shepard and Terry Slayton are inactive. If they are active, this gets thrown into chaos. I think Slayton would handily replace John Ross. Sterling Shepard would probably have to do battle with Kadarius Tony because you know David Gettleman will be in Jason Garrett's ear saying, hey, play Kadarius. I drafted him in the first round and I need to look good. Evan Ingram's 3.3 average air yards per target last week were fifth fewest in the entire NFL. He is not a viable tight end when being used like that. I don't understand why Jason Garrett is intent on using him in that manner. Saquon Barkley silenced the haters once again, went over 100 yards uh, from scrimmage, caught five balls, scored two touchdowns. He's elite running back one from here on out. Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott, elite quarterback one. Uh, here's what's been going on with, with the Cowboys. They, they've been running more than expected. They're th still throwing the ball 54% of the time on first half early downs, but they've been running a ton and it's, it's hurt Amari Cooper as well as the focal point or as well as the tight ends being focal points in scoring position. I am still treating Amari Cooper and CD lambs as wide receiver ones. If you need to consider them high end wide receiver twos. Okay. Do that. I understand, but that's, they're very, very good. Um, they're going to rotate in and out of the slot this week. Lamb might see more perimeter coverage and, you know, we'll have to do battle with James Bradbury, but I am sticking with these two guys. They're too good not to start as impact players in your lineup. Cedric Wilson is a low volume slot receiver. Don't start him. Um, so here's the deal with Dalton Schultz and Blake Jarwin. Both of them scored touchdowns last week, but over the last two weeks, Schultz leads in snaps 74 to 55% routes run per PFF 39 to 29 targets 15, uh, excuse me, 14 to five and red zone targets five to one Schultz right now is their preferred target in scoring position. I do think that Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb will reclaim that role at some point, but when you're desperate and you need a tight end, Schultz is the guy whose usage tells you, you should start him as a tight end on this week. Like Jarwin is a tight end too. Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard Elliott is dealing with a knee injury. He's not expected to miss any time, um, but I would hold tightly to Tony Pollard and start him as a, a running back four. If you have him, Ezekiel Elliott is my running back two on the week though. He is going to bulldoze the hell out of the Giants front seven. If he is active last one of the night guys and gals, thank you to all my wonderful listeners. Um, Sunday night football, Buffalo bills at Kansas city chiefs. I think that both Josh Allen and uh, Patrick Mahomes should be ranked as the top two quarterbacks this week. I don't care which one you place as the overall quarterback one. Um, this is a scenario where, although the Bills defense is decent, uh, the Chiefs is bad. It, it doesn't really matter. When you get two offensive like the offenses like this, they're going to play against each other like two eels doing a dance. Um, they're there, yeah passing games are going in in shootout mode here so uh both both Mahomes and, and Josh Allen are the top two quarterbacks uh in anyone's uh, in, in the righteous ranks this week Stefan Diggs elite wide receiver one um Kansas City comes up as is tied for the 29th ranked pass defense in Patty Cooper's PD NEFF efficiency rankings um yeah like 
tearing the roof off in this one. Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley, they are both because because there are so many passing game options. We are ranking them as top 36 wide receivers, but both of these dudes can totally finish. Emmanuel Sanders and Cole Beasley can totally finish as wide receiver twos this week. Uh, yeah, they're they're fantastic. Gabe Davis, boom bust wide receiver five. You know, I used to love him. I, he'll hold a, de- a dear place in my heart. I would consider him in DFS. He could get his number called on deep shots again, full on shootout here. But he's he's a boom bust like top fifty receiver. Dawson Knox is officially a fantasy tight end one. Uh, when we already covered that <laughs> in the in the intro, um, running back Zach Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. Uh, I weirdly identically or saw identical touch counts last week, 14 carries and one target for each one of them. The, the chiefs run defense is about as bad as it gets. They just get run on like by every running back that faces them. Patty Cooper's uh, run defense and EFF ratings have them as the 30th ranked unit in the NFL. I have Moss as a running back three because he is the starter. And I have Devin Singletary as an RB four because he is not the starter, but he still plays significant snaps. As mentioned above, Patrick Mahomes, top two quarterback. He's my QB2, but anybody's QB1, I get it. Uh, Tyree Kill, positive regression to the mean hit last week, and it was uh, fantastic. He's going to have to go up against Tredavious White, but they move around the formation, and he just is so good, and Mahomes is so good that it doesn't matter. He's an elite wide receiver one. Mikol Hardman, Byron Pringle are all just dart throws. You can start them, one of them in DFS if you please, but I would not be putting them in uh, a, a redraft starting lineup because it is too unpredictable or rather too sporadic. We know who we like. We like Mikol Hardman. Byron Pringle can play. Andy Marcus Robinson can play too. There's just, there, there's too many of them. Um, my thoughts on Josh Gordon this week are this. This is the type of matchup where if Josh Gordon has anything left in the tank, we're going to see it. Both teams could push for their, their season high in offensive plays run. Um, they, these teams don't really run the ball all that, that much. Um, they're basically going to play in hurry up mode all night long. And I, I will not be surprised if we see these two teams total. I, I don't want to say something too outrageous here, but like, I, like 80 plays, like they, they, what, what they could do, they could each, they could each <laughs> go for like 80 offensive plays. Um, a lot of teams are hitting 70. Uh, yeah. I like, this could be, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe not 80, maybe, maybe 75, but like the, the point is there will be so many passing attempts in this game that if Josh Gordon has something in the tank, Patrick Mahomes is going to see him if he's getting open and he will be able to produce. If he doesn't have anything left, then I don't, then like, I think you'll know right away and you can cut him. Um, but yeah, if he has anything, he'll flash. He's a risky wide receiver five. Travis Kelsey every week, uh, tight end one. Um, okay, so the backfield, this is so bad for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. He, he played on just 52% of the team's snaps last week and Darrell Williams was up to 36%. Edwards is not very involved in the passing game. I think he had three targets and Darrell Williams had two. But here's the thing. In scoring position, inside the five, Darrell Williams got both of the team's carries. Let this be a lesson to anyone who thinks that a team ever has a luxury pick. You don't. You should not spend a first-round pick on a running back. That does not mean that Clyde edwards layer is not not valuable. It's just hard to – playing – producing at the running back position – requires a lot of things to go right. And that's why there are a lot of good running backs that can be had uh, in the, the mid to late rounds. Excuse me. I'm, I'm, you want running backs and good offenses, and there are a lot of good running backs. Uh, Clyde edwards Hilaire is kind of slow, and uh, and they just don't really need to throw him the ball, so they're not doing that. And they have a guy that they may actually prefer in scoring position. That's what I mean to say. So I have Clyde edwards Hilaire as a running back three and Darrell Williams as a running back four. Williams should be rostered in 100% of leagues this week. Um, it is as bad of a brutal of a matchup as you can imagine, though. The Bills front seven uh, are limiting opposing backfields to 11.5 half-point PPR points per game. That is fourth fewest in the NFL. Their score of 70.2% uh, is second best in Patty Cooper's run defense, and EFF run defense uh, efficiency metrics. So, yeah, I'm 
I would not, it, there are many players that I would be looking to start over Clyde Edwards Hilaire in my flex. All right, that is it, you all. Um, I, I so much appreciate all of my, my viewers, my listeners, my readers. Uh, we will be back uh, with the Monday Night Football Preview this uh, this Sunday, this Monday morning. Look out for it. And any anything, any news that breaks Indianapolis Colts, Baltimore Ravens, um, I'll put together a Twitter thread on the subject. Thanks so much, you guys.